Mountain Blade 2 has six kingdoms to choose from, and within those six are a smattering of units that you'll be training from lowly recruit all the way to their tier 5 Giga Chadley goodness. In this video today, I want to reboot an older series I did during the early access of Bannerlord and review the entire unit tree of each respective kingdom. Today we'll be focusing on our last unit guide with the Aserai. This is of course not a guide of min-maxing, but a means of giving you an idea of how well a specific kingdom's soldiers stack up against other soldiers of similar rank. I'll be assigning each unit a rating of low, mid, or high. This way you'll be able to get an idea for how well that unit performs compared to its peers based off of the use case. Perhaps the skills and weapons are all over the place, making it a low-grade unit, or maybe it has the best of the best across the board, making it that high-grade Charles. You can quickly navigate to any tier of soldier by using the chapters and both the timeline and the description. And as always, guys, if you end up enjoying the content, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Each one of those things helps out any content creator you watch in a huge way to aid in combating the dreaded YouTube algorithm. Let's get started here on the Aserai Unit Guide for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Starting us off with Tier 2, we have the Aserai Tribesmen. Now, in days, years past, uh, the Aserai Tribesmen was not very good, but it has become a lot better. So let's take a look at the uh, skills here. We've got 40 athletics, one-handed and polearm, kind of the standard fare for what you expect at Tier 2, with a nice good polearm, a jagged spear, and a great, um, albeit weird, weapon here with the wooden hammer. The reason I actually like the wooden hammer here is because it is short range. It's drastically short range at 45 length. That's actually like very painful. But it does kind of give that roll of the Kazate Footman, which we've talked about before, where the Kazate Footman actually thrives when you're trying to do any kind of bandit quest where you need to take captives. So having the, the Asteroid Tribesmen have access to that is actually pretty nice because they also are very durable. They have really, really solid armor in the Tier 2 category compared to their peers. Look at the Footman, or the Kazate Footman, 832. This Vlandian Footman is 1333. Sturgeon Warrior, oof, 924, the Imperial Infantryman, 1547, and the Batanian Clan, Clan Warrior, 1446. So you can see they, they have very good armor by comparison to a lot of the other bros out there uh, with good body, arm, and leg spread. The biggest downfall, of course, is that wooden hammer. So I think that this kind of keeps the tribesmen at a mid uh, rank when you're thinking of it in a field engagement type of scenario. It does have a really good spear. It does have a solid um, shield and great armor and an okay spread of skills. But I think that wooden hammer is really going to make pushing from tier two into tier three just that much more difficult. At tier three, you do get the benefit of having a longer mace, a better mace, better armor, so on and so forth. So it kind of is all right at that point. But that wooden hammer's length is so short that it's going to push itself out of place in really uncomfortable positions. And I've already shown in the uh, best infantry tier guide um, or tier list that the Asrai veteran infantry thrives in engagements because his sword is very long and it can reach far past its competition. So mid rank here for the Asrai tribesmen and let's move into the Mamluk soldier which is is kind of funky because it's comparable to all the other tier two soldiers but it's also not because it's what kind of progresses you into the cavalry line or into the two-handed shock troop line for the Asrai. and it's in a very weird spot because looking at its spread it has 30 athletics 50 one-handed which is good and 40 throwing which is terrible because it has a polearm so it doesn't benefit from the throwing at all. But it has an iron scimitar, which is arguably way better than a wooden hammer when it comes to field engagements. Obviously, like I said, if you're trying to get any kind of prisoners, it's not so amazing. And armor and durability wise, it's okay. It's like it's slightly above a Sturgeon warrior, which is terrible armor, but not below almost everything else. So it, it does have a good helmet, though, which is worth note noting. The spiked helmet with open turban is, is actually pretty, pretty solid for tier two. So it's just in a funky spot. Um, and I'm, I guess like it's weird to kind of give this a low rank because it's technically from a weaponry standpoint better than the Asrai tribesmen but from a skill standpoint and a, a durability standpoint it's weaker than the Asrai tribesmen so it puts it in a funky spot i think i'd rather see this character as a two-handed character like just use the two-handed skill out the gate on this character and and have him be basically an axeman but watered down give him 
50 two-handed and 40 athletics, call it a day. Maybe put pull on if you want to put it on there to give a little diversity to the character. But just just make him two-handed and make him have a very clear-cut role between these two characters. So even if I have a tier two Mamluk soldier, I can keep him within a category of shock troop if I want to keep him at least leveling together with them and he'll have the same use case. Of course, he's not going to have the same use case of any one of these units, but I think he fits into a weird spot in the army right now. And I'm going to give him a low ranking because of the fact that I think he needs work because the rest of the military is actually really weak, is really, really great. But the Mamluk soldier is a weird weak point in the chain that makes progressing into the latter two uh, tiers or latter two uh, uh, progression points a really kind of awkward one. So just to recap here, mid tier on the Asteroid tribesman and a low tier on the Mamluk soldier. On to tier three, we have the Asteri Light Archer. Now, in the past, this was an Asteri Skirmisher and it was a throwing weapon character, not an archer. So this is actually a pretty cool marked improvement for the Asteri military because the Master Archer is a really solid unit. Now, taking a look at this character, it's gonna have 70 bow, 80 athletics, and 70 one-handed um, with a hunting bow that does 45 pierce damage, which is unfortunately the lowest damage of all of the bows available at tier three, and then two stacks of arrows, which is nice because those are arrows, it's two stacks, they're, they're there. It is tier three though, so that is kind of funky because we look at the Kazate Hunter, it has the same, well, it has 70 athletics, not 80, but it has a better bow with a simple short bow, and it has step arrows, which are better arrows, but only one stack. Uh, looking at the Imperial Trained Archer, again, we have a bow that is actually, oh, I'm sorry, 46, oh, yeah, yeah, I was right. Um, the Trained Archer has the Mountain Hunting Bow, which is only slightly better, but one stack of barbed arrows. And then we have the Sturgeon Hunter, which has the Mountain Hunting Bow, and two stacks of barbaros. But he also has 80 bow skills. So he has all these things going for him with that. So I think that looking at the Asari light archer compared to the other archers, he gets more arrows. That's huge. He gets two stacks versus the one stack of both Kazate and the Imperials. He does have the two stacks of that the uh, Sturgians have, which the Sturgian uh, hunter is a high rank. Um, but the bow is just one point of damage less than the Sturgeon Hunter, so I think it's comparable. Doesn't have ten, ten as, or doesn't have ten more bow skill, and the arrows are just slightly less damage. So I think if we're thinking of this again as a pure archer by comparison to the other three, he kind of lines up more with the Sturgeon Hunter. And I'm going to give the Asteroid Light Archer a high rank because of it, because I think compared to the other archers, he actually does what he's supposed to do for a longer period of time in prolonged engagements when he's going to be amongst his archer and master archer, master archer peers in your army as he progresses through the ranks. So I think he does what he's supposed to do. He's not going to run out of arrows and he just all of a sudden start running forward because he's out when the other ones don't have um, are, are not out of their arrows. So that's something to kind of consider when you look at these things as a whole. So a high rank here for the Asteri Ma the Asteri Master Light uh, the Asteri Light Archer here just to kind of keep that uh, bow in line. Now the Asteri Footman is interesting because we have seventy athletics, one handed and pole arm. We have pretty much the exact same armor we had in Tier Two, and we get a heavy horseman's mace, which is nice. It does some good damage, and it's a mace, so it does good damage against armor. Those are all things I actually really, really, really enjoy about the Asteri Footman. Now, if I compare, though, the Footman to the Kazate Spearman, there's way less durability. But, uh, the Volandian Spearman, well, the Volandian Spearman is terrible overall, overall, so who cares? But the Imperial Trade Infantryman now gets throwing weapons and has comparable amounts of durability and a sword. Uh, the Sturgeon Soldier has amazing durability, has a sword, has a uh, um, a nice big old spear here, and the Batanian Train Warrior has comparable durability and better stats. So it, it's just kind of interesting to kind of compare these because I think the Asteri Footman would on first blush look like a low rank but i think that the fact that it's got a mace and the fact that that mace is going to give him a threat range into higher tiers keeps him actually pretty competitive at that tier three rank so i'm going to he's going to retain his previous rank of mid and it's going to stay there for that asteroid footman 
Moving into our Asrai Mamluk regular, we have a very interesting character with 70 riding, 70 one-handed, and 70 throwing, with no throwing capabilities. This is another one that I think suffers from that kind of mix-up with that, um, well, throwing, and it, it's pretty unfortunate here, right? Because if he had 70 polearm, he'd actually be a really cool unit. And that, that pull arm in and of itself, the knob-headed spear with frills, is the same one that the footman has. Uh, so it's not braceable or couchable, which is kind of something worth noting about the footman, by the way. This is not a braceable uh, spear. Oh, knob-headed spear. Oh, this one is the knob-headed one with, with frills. Oh, sorry, sorry, I messed it up. And his durability is actually not that excellent. Studded leather coat is only 10, 2, and 5. That is not the best. So when you kind of look at this... Um, compared to, say, the uh, Kazate Horseman. We're looking at a character with better armor, with some nice stats at 70, 70, and 70 pole arm, and we look at a nice good shield, a nice good straight saber. So you look at this kind of stuff, and it's like, man, it's, it is a bit of a hamstring, especially when you compare this to the new light cavalry unit as well, who has... 60 riding, 70 one-handed, and 80 polearm. So I'm going to be giving the Asrae Mamluk regular a low rating, and it's mainly because of the polearm and his really lack of durability with that 10 body armor. That thing is going to ensure that he gets killed by archers or other things very easily by comparison to his other two peers in this tier 3 slot. Uh, moving lastly into our Mamluk Axeman, we get a really fun character here that brings us into Shock Cav very early at Tier 3 with 72 handed, 80 athletics, and 71 handed. All really good stats across the way here that give us access to a character that competes with, like, say, the Batanian Raider. And I think Sturgia's Line, line Breaker is actually level 4. So let's take a look here at the Raider. By com oh, see Raider, uh, Batanian Raider by comparison. Britannia Raider has a really funky set of stats here with 70 athletic, 70 one-handed, and 70 throwing of 30 polearm. So we already know this guy has got a low rating. We've gone over him before. And his durability by comparison, 14-4-6 in the woodland garments versus this ring mail at 28-10. It's just a solid difference here. Now, there is no one-handed on this character. He does have a short-handed handled Bardish and I actually really like the Bardish quite a, quite a bit. So I'm going to be giving the high, the Asrae Mamluk Axeman a high rating by comparison. I would love to see a one-handed sword just put onto this character to take advantage of that 70 one-handed. I, I really kind of think that when, and remember the way that the AI works, when there are high skill values for something, if the AI determines that it needs to use that skill value, say one-handed, it will pick it up off the ground. Or if all else fails, it'll mount a horse. Whatever it needs to do. Actually, I've never seen the AI mount or dismount a horse to fit its athletics or its riding skill. That's technically how the AI is supposed to work. When you see these skills that they don't have access to with their additional or uh, their initial equipment. But I would just really like to see a sword put on this character to make him even better. So I'm going to be giving him a high rating uh, because he does have that capability to just really punch hard at a very early level for shock um, infantry, and I think that's pretty sweet. So we have, again, to recap, high rating on the Light Archer, mid rating on the Footman, low rating on the Mamluk Regular, and a high rating here on the Mamluk Axeman. With Tier 4, we're starting to really kind of pop off with the Asrai. Now, the first thing here is the Asrai Archer, and we're seeing a 100 across the board with bow, athletics, and one-handing. One-handing, one-handed. With a bow, two of the simple short bow variety with 56 pierce damage, and then just simply uh, one damage barbed arrows, uh, one pierce damage with two stacks of them. With an amazing amount of armor, though, we have robe over mail shirt with 25 armor, 12 and 12 in the leg and arm slot there, and a really good helmet with 30 nice armor on that. Decent enough bracers, okay, uh, boots, and just a shawl. But what makes the Astri Archer even crazier, though, is depending upon which set you get. Now, remember, when the unit spawns into the game, it's a 50-50 chance of it being one or the other. Um, if there's three units, then, you know, it's equally split, I, I suppose. Um, and that's per unit. Like, if you have 100 units, I guess it's not going to be like that, from what I understand. I, I get confused very much on how the sets really work out. Um, it doesn't seem to be a, an RNG based off the total number. It's each individual one. But... Since it's a 50-50 split, the other set gets piercing arrows, which are damn strong. 
four pierce damage, stack of 23. That's actually very brutal. And it would make them one of the strongest archers in tier four by comparison to its competition. The Kazate Archer, I think, is its strongest competition with really good damage arrows. Um, and those are the same arrows regardless of the set. It only changes the helmet on the set. And an amazing bow. So the Kazate Archer is that high rank. But we look over here at the Sturgeon Archer, which is very comparable to the base Asurai Archer with a Nordic short bow at 52 pierce damage and just barbed arrows with one damage on them and stacks of 20. Looking back here over to the Kazate Archer on that standard thing. Simple short bows, 56 pierce damage as well, with barbed arrows having that stack of 21 pierce damage. So it's like they're it's like the same unit across the board. Uh, not as well, not as much durability, because this is a lower piece of armor by comparison. But the Sturgeon Archer has 10. Oh, there's not. I thought I had 110 bow, but 100 bow here. Looking at the Imperial Veteran Archer, though, you get only one stack of barbed arrows and a and a did the same bow. This guy, this guy can't even compete. He's not that low. So with the Sturgeon Archer being a mid and the Kazate Archer being a high, I think the Asrai Archer depends upon which set you get. Is he getting this set? Then he's definitely going to be that mid rank along with the Sturgeon Archer. Does he have the piercing arrows? Then I think that puts him at a high rank. So this is a very interesting one. It's going to be dependent upon how he spawns into the game for you. Um, I don't know if it's just an oversight on Tail World's part or why they had one set have uh, piercing arrows and the other not. So I'm just going to put this guy at a mid uh, rank because I feel like that's fair considering that it's based off of RNG whether or not he's going to have a higher punching power or not and that is not something that you want to base your army on you want it to be a reliable thing to kind of stand upon so a mid rank here for the Asurai Archer Moving into our Asurai Infantry, we get a really cool infantry unit that's going to really mirror his older bro in the Veteran Infantry with 100 Athletics, one-handed and polearm, and a very good sword with the uh, the ridged Flissa with 115 length and a good amount of damage at 72. The knob-headed spear, horseman javelins, which do a great amount of 89 da uh, pierce damage, and then a desert over she oval shield. And one thing to really note with the infantry soldier is that he's got a great helmet with 35 damage uh, armor. <laughs> um, he has one of the best chest pieces with 36 body armor on this and seven flat arm and six uh, leg armor. But he has the best gauntlets of any tier four infantry soldier with 24 arm armor, thus adding to the overall armor value of him quite substantially. And just some middling boots, whatever, the leather riding boots. And they're the same for both set, and that's really nice. The only thing that changes per set is the uh, uh, knob spirit with or without frills. And his competition is... Interesting, because you look at the Batanian Pick Warrior, who's got really good skills here, um, a braceable uh, spear, a really good sword, uh, great defensive capabilities across all of his armor pieces, right? But mainly that chest piece and that, that head piece. Or you look at the Vlandian Swordsman, which has great, well, okay armor and all right stats. And it's, it's a Vlandian Swordsman. I've already said my piece about him. Uh, the Infantry Veteran, who has got great armor, Really nice overall abilities. The Pillum, uh, you guys know how I'm not a huge fan of that one here. And then you look to over at the Sturgeon Spearman, which is really strong. 25, 10, um, and then 22 on his bronze bracers. And his uh, boots have 23 leg armor. So this guy's armored to the max with a really good set of skills, great weaponry, and the such. So it's kind of like a very interesting uh, point here, right? The Spear Infantry we had at a mid rank. The uh, Picked Warrior we had at a high rank. And the uh, Empire, or Empire, yeah, the Empire guy we had at a mid rank as well, with the Sturgeon at a high rank. So the Asrai Infantry, I think, falls into that high rank as well. I think he's a very strong combatant because he's got a long sword. He's got a great little spear here. Um, he's got a lot of really good armor on him. A good set of skills that actually match what he has with the added capability to throw and get a lot of good damage out. That horseman javelin, from a lot of my testing of the veteran infantrymen, the javelin wasn't the thing that killed a bunch of people, but it was the thing that weakened a lot of infantry soldiers so that when they actually met into combat, it was a, it was what gave that Asurai veteran infantry soldier a little bit of a leg up initially they would suffer a lot of casualties they would stall out at one point and then the asteroid veteran infantry would always progress past any competition i threw him threw at him because they have the capability to soften soldiers with those javelins initially so i give that high rank here to the asteroid um, infantry soldier which is better than it was before it was a mid rank before and the asteroid archer was a high rank so these two have swapped in their rankings
Now, moving beyond this, we're going into the Asurai Mamluk Cavalry. And I've been trying to think of how to compare this. I compared the Kazait um, Archer Cav unit to the Mamluk Cav unit because there was, it's the only other Archer Cav unit out of the Noble lines. So, do I compare back? when that's not necessarily the role of the, Os the, the Asurai Mamluk Cav, which is mainly a hybrid uh, inf or, uh, cavalry soldier and horse archer. So it kind of felt a little funky, and I'm going to kind of talk about this character as he kind of pertains to both in their own separate kind of um, scopes, I suppose. He has 110 riding, 100 bow, and 100 one-headed. All really great sets of skills and stats here. He has a really solid bow with the heavy recurve. Then he gets piercing arrows, which are stupid strong. Four damage on top of that. He gets a good sword. gets a great shield. He has a really well-armored horse here and a solid horse in on top of it. And a lot of really great armor. This character, across the board, is a stable, strong, badass character. And I think that you can get so much use out of him in both of their roles that I'm giving him a high rank because he does better than a lot of other cavalry soldiers. And he only is comparable, of course, to the Kazate uh, archer character, uh, horse archer. And the only reason really the horse archer ranks above the Mamluk cav is that it has more arrows. So it's better at being a pure horse archer. And I think that this is just such a solid strike in between the two that I'm giving it a high ranking because they're so strong in your military. And I think that people kind of overlook them or maybe the uh, Kazate Noble line or the Kazate Pure Archers or maybe the Shock Cav of Volandi or whatever it is. They just thrive in both of what their roles are so well that I just cannot um, pass that up. Into now, lastly, the Asurai Mamluk Guard. Now, the Mamluk Guard is a step down here from the Palace Guard. You can probably hear my dog punching something that's made of plastic. Um, and that is a, it's a big step here because the Mamluk Guard, as it progresses up to the Palace Guard, the Palace Guard is stupid strong. But the Mamluk Guard is going to give us 100 one-handed, 110 athletics, 100 throwing, and we're getting an Executioner Axe, which is just sick, and a Tribesman Throwing Axe with a ton of armor. The Chainmail, 25, 13, 13, and the Helmet here giving us 45, as well as these Brass Scale Pauldrons giving us uh, 2 and 7. I thought that was actually going to be higher. Comparing this across to a Sturgeon Linebreaker, we have a character with a ton of really good skills. 130, 100, 110, a really good axe, a long war sword, and some pretty good defensive capabilities. And the Falksman, we've already talked about how great the Falksman is. And the, Miner the Pyrrha Manavliaton with just a, a moving tank with its Manavlion. So how does the, Ma the Mamluk Guard kind of stack up against the competition here? And... If you kind of compare these, the Batanian Falksman we gave a high rank to, the um, Manavliaton we gave a high rank to, and then the Linebreaker we gave a mid rank to. So, kind of comparing some stuff, we get a lot of athletics. We get 100 throwing, we get 100 two handed. We get the capability to take advantage of all three of those skills in the character's armament. We get a lot of really good defensive capabilities with the character, and we also get a really strong progression point for this. So I'm kind of stuck in between a mid and a high rank. The mid rank because, you know, is it that much better than, say, a Falksman? The Falks is a really stupid strong weapon, and it does a lot of damage. Or is he stronger than the Manavliaton who has really strong offensive and defensive capabilities? It's hard to really say. I think this is going to come down to how you use the Mamluk Guard in your military, and if you are kind of versed enough in using shock infantry to really get the most out of them. I personally find them to be a really strong character because they progress very well, but I'm going to go with the mid rank because relying on the individual user's skill, again, kind of creates a little bit of an RNG basis in the same way that the Asurai Archer does, right? So I don't like that too much. I like that to be a more reliable um kind of rating so to recap here we have high or uh, sorry mid rating on the asteroid archer a high rating on the infantry a high rating on the mamluk cav and a mid rating on the mamluk guard all right time for the last tier tier five for the asteroid starting us off with the master archer and 
The master archer is a high rank. I'm just going to say it out the gate. I'm not even going to compare him to other archers because he's just that much better. He has 160 bow skill. He has the highest bow skill of any non-noble archer in the game. And he gets two stacks of piercing arrows. The best arrows in the game and he has a step recurve bow i think this is the one that only is slightly outclassed by the step recurve or the step war bow uh, one of the other does more damage but he also has a disgusting amount of armor 32 on the head 29 8 15 on the chest 28 on the uh, hands and 22 on the leg with one set there's no variety it's this guy every time so the master archer is an absolute girthy badass moving into the veteran infantry this is the 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 winner of our best infantry tier soldier list that we did before and it's really kind of coming down to the fact that he has 160 one-handed which i believe is either 30 or 20 one-handed more than anyone i think there's someone else that has 140 uh one-handed but that is 20 more one-handed than everyone else giving him a little bit more damage a little bit more swing speed and he has a long cascara giving him 116 length comparing this to the legionary who i think has a comparable length sword no yeah 116 on that length um when we did the testing of the veteran infantrymen fighting against uh legionaries they won when they we did them against the sturgians they won they won against everyone because they were still able to use their 50 throwing to leverage that horseman javelin to mitigate a lot of the health differences or the or the defensive capabilities of their peers like i said with the asteroid infantry it's what gives them that little bit of a boost over them the fine steel leaf spear is great the reinforced oval shield and a really good set of armor with that light lamellar at 48 14 23 on the hands 22 on the legs and a huge 52 on the head with a good 14 body armor coming down onto the bronze scale shoulder guards it is the best infantry unit at this point in the game the throwing weapon helping to mitigate a lot of the damage or uh, mitigate a lot of the health differences or defensive capabilities so they can do damage to kill their opposition very very well and again one set this is what you get you don't get any variety it's just these guys so you know you're getting the exact same one every time out which i think is a pretty huge strength into the Mamluk heavy cav we have again one sec set character and one that is really set the step recurve bow the piercing arrows the fine long cascara with 116 length a good lard, large adarja i think it's adarja or adarga um then the darshi horse like this fucking character is a badass great armor great everything like it, it it's disgusting to me that the asteroid military goes from being yeah you know some good things here some bad things there some good things here some bad things there to just stupid strong all the way across the board on the bottom tier five uh, spoiler alert everything is going to be high rank that we're talking about right now because this character is going to thrive as a horse archer and he's going to thrive as a cavalry soldier and he strikes a good balance of being in between having high amounts of survivability a very good fast strong horse a lot of armor on that horse and a lot of armor on himself even putting him into a siege scenario where he is not using his arrows he's great in siege he's great in field battles so you get so many units in this military that start off very slow and get very, a lot better. And I'm going to talk about that more in just the next section here. But our last character to talk about is the Mamluk Palace Guard. So we get a lot of the same things we had in the Mom, with the Mamluk Guard, just better versions of them. We now have an Executioner Axe, Tribesman Throwing Axe, which we've had before. But we now get Southern Decorated Chainmail, which is 27, 13, 13. Split Vambrises at 20, and the male Cavalier Boots at 12 leg armor with the closed steel cap giving 52 head armor, and those bronze steel scale pauldrons giving that 2-7 um, on that uh, split. And skill-wise, 132 handed, 140 athletics, and 130 throwing. Oh, by the way, this guy's got 130 down the board for the heavy cap. I, I didn't talk about it, so I just want to quickly show it off. Um, but again, back here, 132 handed, 140 athletics, 130 throwing. So he does compare to the line breaker right the, the heroic line breaker he does compare to the veteran falksman he compares to the elite manavliaton and the volgier now i would have written the volgier out but both lion exodus and strat gaming have told me how important and showed me how important the volgier is so i stand corrected here and the volgier having a very long weapon does help out with 143 length the elite manavliaton having a ton of tanky capabilities across his armor and a manavlion which does a lot of damage 
He gets a Pilum now and a Fine Steel Spatha. A lot of really cool capabilities. And the, the veteran Falksman being very good with the Romphaya, as well as having throwing weapons. And the Heroic Linebreaker being an absolute veritable tank with a two-handed axe, a throwing axe, and a narrow war sword. There are so many good things coming out of the shock troops nowadays. It's hard to kind of split the hairs on these guys. But a lot of the information I saw from Lion Exodus and from Strat Gaming, and please go check out both of their YouTube channels. I'm talking to you guys from um, an analytical standpoint of showing off skills and talking about things from an anecdotal standpoint. They show you a lot of number crunching, a lot of really hard facts that are really hard to argue with, and a lot of really cool applications and vacuum testing to show you how each one of these units does. So if you like this style of a video, please go and check out Lion Exodus and Strat Gaming. They are great bros of the Banner Lord that you should be checking out. But I'm going to be giving the Asteroid Mamluk Palace Guard a high rank based off of the testing of both of their results, showing the Mamluk Palace Guard to have the lowest amount of units lost whenever they would test and the highest kill-death ratio of all of the other um, units by comparison. I think the Heroic Linebreaker came pretty close and the Veteran Falksman did quite a bit as well, but the Palace Guard, and maybe I've read the information wrong, but the Palace Guard to me seems like it stood out amongst all of the other shock infantry soldiers, and it just kind of reinforces the point of the entire bottom line of the Asteroid being stupid strong. Let's move over now to the Noble Line. With the Noble Line for the Asteroid, we have a character that becomes more in line with like the Brigand and the Hardened Brigand. Uh, from Sturgia, a character that's on horse and uses throwing weapons, but is still very, very strong at what he does. The first character is the Asrai Youth at Tier 2, giving us 30 riding, 20 one-handed, 40 throwing, 60 polearm, very all over the place. We would compare this to a Volandian Squire, has 40 riding, 45 one-handed, and 40 polearm. Very kind of cut and dry. So looking at this, we do get 60 polearm, which is great, but we get 30 riding and we get 20 one-handed and a wasted 40 throwing. 40 is kind of like that point you'd want at this kind of bracket. So it is nice that you do we do get quite a lot of um, uh, polearm here, and especially it being a tier two unit, having access to good durability and being on a pretty damn good horse at tier two, all really great things. So I think I will give the youth a medium or a mid, I'm sorry, a mid, a medium rare, uh, a mid rank because it, it does feel a little funky, the fact that he has that wasted skill in throwing, but I think he has such a blown out amount of pull arm that it does help out in increasing his pull arm damage. Um, and pushing them from youth into horsemen is not so much of a, a hurdle that is, as it is from saying going from tier 3 to tier 4 where there's a higher experience requirement. So let's move into now the tribal horsemen where we start to be, get the beginning vestiges of the Ferris. We get throwing capabilities with the jagged the uh, the jagged javelin. We get the weighted step spear, which is now braceable, not couchable, the difference of course. Uh, the wooden adarja and then the uh, flizza, um, the ridge flizza. And... We get 30 one-handed, 70 throwing, 70 polearm, 80 riding. Showing us that the, the emphasis here is on polearm and on throwing and less on the one-handed. And I think the character kind of does this pretty well. So taking a look at this character, we do also get the, the, the strong horse. A uh, comparable amount of um, survivability to the previous rank. Not an amazing amount, which is kind of worth noting. And we get a horse that kind of, or I'm sorry, a, a mace or a Fliss, it kind of depends on what you are. Looking at the, what this character does though, which is focus on throwing, it does it quite well with that 70 throwing. Um, I think its durability though is a bit of a problem. It is going to suffer from being shot at a, quite a bit. It does have a nice shield, not a very large shield, so it can probably be focused down pretty quickly. And there's not a lot of armor on the horse. So again, it will be focused down quite quickly. So I'm going to keep the Tribal Horseman at that mid that we had before. But once we move into the Ferris, things get specie spicy sausage. We have 100 riding, 100 throwing, 110 polearm, and we're going to be looking at that nice spear here, a Jarid, which is a much better look at 121 throwing damage on these things. A Ridge Flissa, which is which is still pretty damn good. Uh, still not an amazing shield, but it is there nonetheless. And that horse has now been upgraded to a Darshi horse, giving us good speed, but a high maneuverability. You want better maneuverability on anything that is going to be throwing from range. Um, and a really good increase of survivability with the same, pretty much the same armor kit that the Asrite Infantry has. 
just with le um, not as good arm armor, um, but really good helmet and a really good uh, chest piece. Now, if I compare this over to the Brigand, I'm sorry, not the, not the Brigand, the Hardened Brigand, we get a character that's got a lot of really comparable points, right? 100 riding, 100 one-handed, 100 throwing, not so much on the polearm side of things, right? The javelins aren't as good. The sword is not as long. Uh, the durability is not as great either. So I definitely give the uh, Asteroid the beginning of it being great, the beginning of that high rank for this uh, position. So a high rank here for the Asteroid Ferris. Into the Veteran Ferris, we get all the same things that the Ferris had, but even better now. 160 riding, 130 one-handed, 130 polearm, but we do lose 20 throwing, dropping down to 80, which I I'll take it. I'll take it because Jareed do have a stack of five, and if you give this guy a captain who can increase that stack amount, that is great, but he'll also still be able to pack a serious punch with his polearm and with his sword, and that's quite nice. He does have a stud Adarga here, which is is what it is, um, but a nice good increase here to 37.28 on the chest, 9 on the armor, and then now 23 on the legs with a Darshi horse as well, but with far more armor on that Darshi horse. So um, I'm going to keep that high rank because there is really, I mean, there is the, uh, it goes Hardened Brigand into the what? The Horse Raider. The Horse Raider has very comparable amounts of stuff. The Broad Blade Javelin, I think, is 10 less damage than the Jareed. That's 20 less damage than the Jareed. And we get a much shorter spear. We get Axe on Horse, which I'm not too crazy about. Uh, no armor on this horse itself. And uh, better survivability, I would say, on, the, on all the armor pieces. Um, but just a little bit less on the skills front, of course, here with 130, 130, 130. This has... 160, 130, 130. So much better riding, gonna be a lot faster, especially with a better horse and better survivability on that horse. Um, very crucial to take a look at that. Um, also too worth noting that this character will be great in sieges if you decide to pit, take them off horse. Well, they come off a horse when they go on a siege. So they'll actually be able to do some damage to things in those siege scenarios. Moving into our Vanguard Ferris though, we get a, a, a just a tanky man. 47, 14, and 23 on his luxury scale armor. It gets better as we move into his split vambers at 20 and split boots at 22. And a really good lance that is now couchable. So this thing actually has really good, really good punching power because it has some of the best skill spread. Most of the time when you look at um, it, soldiers, they usually get three, maybe four skills that will have good bonuses. But this has got a lot of good bonuses. 170 riding, 90 athletics, 170 one-handed, 140 throwing, and 200 polearm. I think if we're taking a look at all the noble lines, and I'm looking at them in a silo, right? If I'm looking at the banner knight, and is it a good shock cap? Yeah, it's great. Am I looking at the cataphract? Yeah, it's amazing because it's also super survivable. If I'm looking at the the Druznik, it's it's very good also at uh, being on foot. But the Vanguard Ferris can like do it all. It's great at riding. It's good at foot because it's got 90 athletics. It's great with its one-handed sword. It's great at throwing. It's great with its polearm. And it's great on horseback. The only thing it can't do is shoot a goddamn bow. If you gave it a bow, it's still got 65 skills so it could pull it off. I think that Asurai Vanguard Ferris is one of the best, most well-rounded units in the game. And it just doesn't really get the shine that the other ones do. Because I think a lot of people kind of think of it too much as just a throwing cavalry soldier. And it's definitely getting a high ranking right now. Still retains the Jareed, gets that uh, long or fine steel long cascara. It has a great uh, shield, a member couchable lance now, and so much survivability with the Ascarat with an even better horse. It has higher speed, about comparable maneuverability. I think it goes from 71 to 73. Oh, same maneuverability, just higher speed here. Um, and it, of course, has a ton of armor on it. So the Azurai Vanguard Ferris, the, the Azurai Noble Line in general is one of my favorite Noble Lines because it is so diverse and it fits the kind of um, multi-use kit personality that the entire army does. And it is really, really fun and really enjoyable. So if you've not yet used the Azurai Ferris, I strongly encourage you to try out the Ferris, especially that Vanguard, because you'll be surprised at how well they'll be able to perform in almost anything you throw at them. So with all that being said, let's take a look at the army in recap. And... We see with the Mamluk soldier, 
that it is in a really weird spot. It doesn't really fit too well into its skill setup, into the way it progresses down to the rest of the army, and we see that kind of reflected into the Mamluk regular. Now, then the Mamluk cab and heavy cab take off, and everything else in the army starts to get really just strong. And it's just worth noting that the beginning of the Asarai plays very weak when it comes to the tribesmen, the Mamluk soldier, the recruit, even the footmen and regular are not that great. But progressing into the Light Archer and, and the Axeman, we start to see really strong characters. And then when you get to that Tier 4, you get really good showings of characters, but with some random random elements or stuff that's maybe more built off of your skill. But then that Tier 5, everything is just stupid strong. Everything is either best in class or there's just or it just happens to just do well against everything else. Like looking at the Master Archer, the Veteran Infantry, it kind of makes sense that it's best in class. But you look at stuff like the Palace Guard and it kind of takes you to test some things. Um, again, huge shout out to Lion Exodus and Shrack Gaming for their kind of durability or their really heavy punching power to shine. And I, in my opinion, I think, and I've said this many, many times, that Asteri, the Asteri military slept on the most. People don't usually pick them. They don't really kind of go with them because they're not that kind of glit and glamorous uh, knights in shining armors type of style of, inf- of, of of army, but they get really badass at the end of the day. They're really strong. They can have such great punching power into both cavalry and horse archer or cavalry and throwing weapons or really great anti-infantry or anti-cavalry with their infantry. They just have so many great things going for them. Um, I think the biggest weakness is that they're all the way at the southern portion of the map. It's not as terribly interesting down there, and it can be kind of get a little boring and a little stale. So I think people kind of tend to not play them. But I think that if Tail World kind of shores up the Mamluk soldier and the Mamluk regular to kind of not feel so weird or out of place along with the rest of the military, I think that this could be just fine. And I, I think that it's okay for us to have low-ranked things by comparison to other things, but a lot of the time I give things low rankings because their skills are mismatched or their armor is just so drastically far and away from its other comp- uh, its competition that it just feels like, okay, well, you're naturally at the lowest spot. I think that in the future, if I ever redid these, I'd like to have low B because they are outperformed by other people in their tier outside of just simply statistics or maybe it is hey you know what the mom look regular just doesn't have the writing of another unit or the the one-handed of another unit or or the other units just all have um comparable weapons but the regular just has the least of the comparables but it's we're talking about four or five damage points and variance here some way to kind of make it so that everything's on a somewhat level playing field or it kind of acts to the strengths and weaknesses of those armies respectively so that's my kind of two cents here on the asteroid military my favorite military i'd probably say because it is easily the strongest and i think one of the most diverse and fun of all of the militaries because you get just access to so many fun units um even though I guess, I guess now that I kind of think about it and, and look at it, it's very similar to the Kazate military, which I've already said is my favorite style uh, with things just kind of going in a nice, good, orderly fashion. Uh, you get that very similar here with the Asrai as well. But go ahead and let me know in the comment section below how you are dealing with your Asrai military. Are you thriving with it? Are you having a good time? Are you struggling with it? Are you really having a hard time keeping things alive past tier three? Always love to hear your feedback. And hopefully uh, we'll have a change to these things in the future. And this will drastically change this. We've now concluded our unit guide series. We've covered all of the kingdoms. But go ahead and let me know in the comment section if you want me to do some of the ones for the mods that are out, what have you. Always down to cover new things, my guys. But as always, have a good one. And take care.